This week on Corinne's Picks, we have Professor Jason Gerald. Welcome to Kroon's Pick, Mr. Gerald. Thank you for having me. I am so glad you were, well, you were available to come on our show today. Um, it's a real treat. Um, this show is going to be primarily about the art of black fraternities. It's an it's a area which many of us, including myself, know very little about. Mm -hmm. So before we look at the art and examine the art mm -hmm. of the fraternity, um, if you could just tell us a little bit about what fraternity you're in and the history of the fraternity? Well, I belong to Kappa Alpha Psi, and I've been a member for about 36 years. So I've been a Kappa longer than I've been anything else. And it's one of the, what we call the Divine Nine organizations, which are primarily black organizations. Uh, there was a time in our history in the 1900s where there were few black students on campuses, and they weren't really connected. So the fraternities and sororities, the goal was to connect us and form friendships that would outlast our college experience. And most of my friends or members of my fraternity or other fraternities. And uh, in TV, you see some of the bad stuff, but they don't really realize what the great things we do. Um, if you take a look at the Pan Hullet Conference, we raised something like, I believe it was $17 million in scholarship money and another 4 million hours in, scholarship, in uh, community service hours. So we're out there doing a lot of work. I myself belong to two chapters, so I'm out there pretty much every single weekend. What are the two chapters you belong to? I belong to the Bronx Alumni Chapter, which okay. is housed not too far from here, and I belong to Queens Alumni okay. Chapter as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, what inspired you to start doing art around your fraternity? I had a dean of pledges who's uh, in Chapter Invisible. He was doing a little bit of artwork for us. And one day while I was in the intake process, he says, uh, I need you to do some artwork for me. And I said, I'm not really an artist. I don't really do it. And he really didn't want to hear that. So he motivated me to start. And that's when I started. And I, it kind of became a passion of mine. So I'm, although I don't have any formal training, I just keep making stuff. And I make stuff for friends. And I don't really sell most of it. But I'm always looking for an extra edge. I'm beginning to play with lights and electricity and all kind of stuff. Just anything to decorate the place uh, for Greeks. So what happens with the, the, the fraternity after college? Like, what is the relationship between fraternity brothers like? Is it something that's just that young guys do when they're in college? Or oh, is, no. it, is, it, is it a oh, lifelong? No. It's, it's incredible. Um, I, I pledged my junior year. And two years later, I was done. It's become a bigger part of my life after I graduate. Um, you do a little bit of community service, but you're still trying to study, be a student. You got a lot going on. But once you graduate, it's like full force ahead. And the nice thing is the network is that as a young brother, I had access to all these older brothers who was doing incredible things. And now since I'm one of the older brothers, I meet, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 young bros. And it's not just mentorship for the people outside the fraternity, but in the fraternity as well. I don't care what you want to do. We probably got some brothers that have been doing it that can help you do it, help you interview for it, tell you what it's about. And if you're interested in something else, and maybe you don't want to do it for a living, there's always a brother you could reach out to ask questions. So the networking opportunities are just incredible. And it goes across my fraternity. There's you know, other sororities and other frat brothers, and we all link up and get some things done. So. Look, I know very little about the fraternities or the sororities, but the thing that's really famous, um, my, my famous image of mm -hmm. black fraternities is the stepping. So my mm -hmm. guilty pleasure is... Oh. Um, I love seeing the men in the suits with the, the canes and doing the steps. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe before we get into your art, we, okay. can, we can do a tiny clip of the fraternity brother oh, doing um, the stepping, mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. um, just as a little treat. Mm -hmm. This clip was one of our chapter brothers. We were at a picnic and you know we talk a lot of smack to each other. And some of the older brothers who really good at caning, um, just started doing their thing. And we didn't realize how good he was until he started doing it. We had been in the fraternity a bunch of years, so we see the younger brothers, but we had never seen him cane before. So, But why the cane? The cane has got kind of a history with cappers. So unlike most orgs, when we step, 
we use a cane. We think it's flashy, it attracts people. And most of our step shows, we do to raise money to put toward our, our charities, our scholarships, and things of that nature. So we like the cane, it brings people out to watch us. So do you yeah. have to be a member of a, f a fraternity to, to participate in the caning? Well, recently there's a trend where regular people who are students, uh, like in high schools, are beginning to step and not necessarily cane. You know, or if they have the cane, it's more of a prop. They don't really twirl it like we do. That's kind of our thing. But I'm happy to see all these step shows happening. It's a nice event for some of the high school kids to do something after school, give them an activity to, you know, where they have somebody watching them, keeping them safe. It's just another great outlet. So. Oh, okay. And the canes are also decorative. And I don't, I don't, I don't know a cat, but it doesn't have a cane in this house. And I no longer try to twirl or pretend to twirl, but I have canes all over my, all over my house. And I, the thing I like about the step dance is that it's very masculine. I know mm -hmm. that a lot of male culture, mm -hmm. culture around the world, right. um, you know, there's a lot of activities that have mm -hmm. to do with male bonding mm -hmm. and, and tribalism. Right. So I, I love seeing the step dancing because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like a throwback to male oh, culture. The, the ladies do their thing too. Oh, yeah, they're okay. fun to watch. They, and they, it's a competition. A lot of times we have step shows where we're competing against each other. And just to watch the ladies go out, it's a ball. Okay. Uh, I've seen hundreds of step shows. I'll probably see another couple hundred before I'm done. Yeah. So, okay, so in a minute or two, we can start looking at some of your artwork. Mm -hmm. Where did you get your art training? Like, how did you learn how? Oh, I have no training whatsoever. Well, how, um, how did you become interested in the arts? You can buy it or you can make it. And if I buy it, it looks commercial. It looks like something that everybody has. And I want it to be kind of unique. And from the days that I started, I've just... You know, you do anything long enough, you just get better at it. Mm -hmm. My earlier pieces, eh, nothing to write home about. But, you know, in about a year or so, I got, I, I like to think pretty good at it. So I'm always trying to look for a different edge to make something different. Mm -hmm. You know, guys have ideas, and I try to make them come true. And I'm, I started with wood, but now I'm painting leather jackets, motorcycle jackets, jean jackets. You know, I've done a pair of sneakers and some other things I'm looking to branch into. And uh, I had to teach myself skills like Photoshop, Illustrator, in order to to incorporate the computer. When I was a student, we didn't have, you know, the toys to make it as easy as like to make stencils and stuff of that nature. But having a computer makes at least inventing it clearer. You get an idea by looking at a computer whether it's doable and then I can transfer that to what I'm doing next. So how do people, how have your brothers been able to collect your work? Like how, how has your art been seen? Like how do they know about your art? Um, I've been in 36 years. I'm becoming popular in the New York City neighbors and brothers visit each other and they'll see something. Where'd you get that? Oh, you know, brother Gerald made it. And my thing is, if you come over, I'll make it for you. I'm not really trying to charge brothers money for something I've learned through the fraternity. And it's a great way to network with other brothers. I just became affiliated with the uh, New Rochelle White Plains chapter oh, okay. because they sent them over to have some artwork oh, done. Wow. And I see those. I love those guys. I see them once a week, you know, so I'm trying to make them stuff now. I met a, a couple of Soros from SG Rose. I'm making stuff for them. So and I'll, if you come over and sit down, I'll make you something. It's just that simple. Okay, so, you know, so that the public knows, we've been talking about your art, so I want to show um, the first image. Okay. And maybe I can stop talking and you can okay. you could start telling us a little bit about the history of each piece and, okay. and, and give us a little description. Okay. Oh, <laughs> This is for my girlfriend at the time. She, uh, when people talk about joining organizations, she joined it. I can't say her age. Let's say she was um, a little bit older than the average person would join. So this was a, a, just a thought of mine. Uh, we have these diamonds that light up, so I want to do an AKA version of it. One of those holes took about two to three, took about a half hour just to drill. So okay. just to drill the holes to put the bulbs wow. took a couple weeks. I mean, and it really wore out my hand. Wow. And uh, it took like three or four pieces of wood, compressed them together, sanded around the side, made them look like one. And this does not involve as much art as cutting, okay. drilling, sanding. And that scrap piece of paper is kind of like the design I made on the computer that I'm trying to emulate. It's a mess around thing because my house was under <laughs> repair. Renova we were, renovation. We were renovation. Okay. We were, so it's a great place to do woodwork without worrying about messing up the place. Okay, so the next yeah. image, please. Oh, man. This is one of our new young brothers. Uh, this is, uh, I have two of these. That's what we call a Kappa diamond, and I also have a crest that looks the same. They literally took it off my wall to go pose for it. This was uh, just a bunch of pieces of wood cut in various different shapes, kind of nailed together to give it kind of like a pyramid kind of shape. So it's like slats of the diamond, what we call the diamond. And I noticed he has mm -hmm. his cane. Absolutely. He's a new guy. He should have his cane. 
He's about to make us proud. This, this is an older piece. Uh, this was one of the first times I painted on denim. I made this for a young lady who I knew on my block. And when I first met her, she told me her mother was a Delta. And we talked some more about it. I, I got the sense she didn't know much about it. And then she disappeared. And then the next time I saw her, she was a Delta. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? So okay. I quickly sat out and got the work. And this is where I learned to paint jackets with different type of paint that you would use on wood. So I'm not sure where she so is. So are you you're using yeah. acrylic or oil? Or? This is acrylic paint, which is okay. what you use for clothing. You have to treat the, the jacket first so it, the paint will stick to it. Okay. And I do some things that artists probably wouldn't do. Like I drew this one in pen first. Okay. <laughs> which okay. I'm sure if anybody knows what they're doing, they'll tell me not to do that. You okay. Know. So. Oh, this young lady is amazing. She's a, a, a nurse. She just... Uh, I think she just passed the bar. She's just incredible. I was having a conversation. I was doing some community service with a bunch of young ladies. And I always think that when I talk to young ladies, it comes better from a, a slightly older young lady. So I invited her. She came right over. I told her I needed her to talk for 20 minutes. A couple hours later, she was still doing her thing. So I, I needed to reward her. So we went right to the motorcycle shop. I bought a motorcycle jacket. Uh, we played with a design. And it took me about a couple of days to make her a, a, a jacket. I don't know how this jacket is doing, but I, I think she's, she's due for another one. I really like the doves. It looks like right. I love the, the doves mm -hmm. and, and the headpiece. I noticed mm -hmm. that she's, she's a collector of, of mm -hmm. her, her sorority. Mm -hmm. are, is, is, are those your pieces in the oh, background? Those are my pieces. Oh, uh, she's oh, just okay. modeling in the house. Those are, oh, okay. my, my cave, as I call it, is what I call all kappa size. Okay. Uh, so we were there where she was trying it on and making sure everything was okay. Um, it, it came out, this is one of my prouder pieces especially since it's for somebody who, who is so um, rewarding of it. So, uh, deserving of it, yeah. Deserving of it, thank you. And it's all mm -hmm. one-of-a-kind pieces. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do when I make something. I'll never make the same thing twice again. So that emblem on her jacket, she won't ever see it again. If you see this jacket, it's hers. So a lot of times it's challenging to come up with new ideas and not repeat ideas. There are a couple of things that belong to nobody, like our crest. Mm -hmm. If I do a crest on a jacket for you, that I'll repeat because the crest belongs to everybody. But I usually try to draw, design, and we all have line names, so I try to make it fit oh, in with your line name I also. I didn't know that. So I see, we have weird names, secret. right? Didn't like my line that. name is kind of juvenile, but it's been juvenile for 36 years. <laughs> yeah, so, and they call me Boo. I know it sounds really <laughs> weird. Yeah. Most people don't actually know my Christian name. They know my line name. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So a lot of brothers okay. were that popular with our line names versus the names we were born with. Okay, so can we have the next image? We have, mm -hmm. we have about two more two more minutes, so we could... Oh, uh, this is just mm -hmm. recently done. Those great guys from New Rochelle, um, this belongs to one of their wives who's a Delta. Now, I tried something a little different there where usually I put a patch on the front. Right. But I tried to incorporate the patch within the drawing. You know, so that's just me doing the drawing, throwing a patch on, making sure it's nice and clean. And it looks much better in person, actually. But I'm really happy with this jacket. It took a while to come up with what I was going to do. She just got it like maybe a week ago. So I'm sure we're going to get a lot of viewers that are interested in, in fraternities and mm -hmm. sororities and, and your art. So yeah. when we roll the credits, I'll definitely um, be glad to show your, your contact information. I appreciate it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can we see the next image? I think we have one more minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a very old one. This is a, a mesh motorcycle jacket. At the time, I was riding motorcycles. And uh, in the summer, it gets really hot. So I bought a mesh jacket. But I want to throw cap on everything. So this was me just playing with diamonds and flames and, you know, what we call back in the day a scroller. So this is a unique design. I have no idea what this jacket is anymore. A lot of my jackets leave. Younger brothers borrowed them. Sometimes they come back, you know. But it's okay. I'll just make another one. They're, you know, so. they're going to be collector's items one day. Oh, who knows? Well, who knows? Okay, mm -hmm. so we, we're going to go to break now. And when we come back, we'll talk to more. Some more some Dr. Mm -hmm. professor, professor Jason Gerald. Yes, thank you.
Welcome back. We were talking to Professor Jason Gerald mm -hmm. about black fraternities and the art that he creates celebrating his fraternity. Mm -hmm. um, we were looking at some of your images. Mm -hmm. I'm just amazed of what you've been able to do mm -hmm. with fraternity art. I think mm -hmm. you've, you've created a new arena. I'm trying to. You know, because when mm -hmm. people, this show is mainly um, about fine art, like painting, mm -hmm. sculpture, photography. Right. And, you know, I'm so glad that we're actually um, taking it to another level mm -hmm. in terms of um, fraternity art mm -hmm. and taking their, their logo and just putting it on just amazing mm -hmm. objects. I've been pretty lucky. I've managed to teach a couple guys to do it. So there's a couple guys coming up behind me that are pretty good. They just need to practice it. Some do it when they have to, but I have one or two particular guys. They're, they're amazing. You know, they're going to teach me some things in a minute. So okay. I'm very happy about that. And yeah. also, you know, during the break, you showed me... You're an amazing calendar. Oh, correct. So, mm -hmm. you know, the calendar, I guess, is, is available. Mm -hmm. um, so let's look at some more images, and maybe you can do a little description on each image. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is actually, I was in Home Depot, I saw these floorboards, and my mind thinks very differently. And I was thinking, I don't really want to lay a floor down when I buy these boards. Mm -hmm. I'll just stack them up, connect them, and uh, make our coat of arms. We put this outside of events, uh, just to signal that it's a Kappa event, mm -hmm. as well as a lighted diamond that'll probably come up. Uh, I just redid this over because it took a beating, and I, it, it took hours of sand down and redo it. Plus, the crest is old, and we have a newer crest. Oh, you have a new so, crest. Right, so every once in a while, there's changes, so I had to do the newer crest on. I have no idea where this is at, but I know it's in New Rochelle somewhere. So have you exhibited your work no, before? No, I'm not, like not at all. This is a very small clock. I don't think I have this anymore because one of my favorite brothers walked in and uh, took it. <laughs> you know, so a lot of times I have something hanging on the wall. One of the, he's got to be an older bro. He'll look. He'll want it. I don't know how to say no. It's not one of my strongest skills, and off it goes. You know, but this is when I started playing with clock mechanism. I just drill a hole through it, put a clock mechanism. That's a piece of wood. So every time you see a line. I kind of make an indent in the wood so it looks a little bit more realistic. So that's just our crest over a sign, a hand sign that we do to signal that we're members of the fraternity. I've done something like this a bunch of times. The last time I did it was on the jacket. It came out, I like to think, pretty good. This is um, a favor for a friend who happens to be in a rival fraternity. So I have to talk a lot of smack before I make something for them. But I wasn't sure how to do it, whether to keep the white in or the, whether to take the white out. So I, I figured I'd just make both of them, and he can take them both and maybe you know, two for the price of one, which is free anyway. But this is the Omega Psi Phi crest. So are, how many black fraternities are there? Uh, major ones. There's major nine ones. major ones, and there's a bunch of smaller ones. But the Latino have gotten their thing going on, okay. and it's coming strong. Although we're primarily a fraternity of, of men and of color or women of color, occasionally you'll see... Uh, other people in there. Uh, Latinos are strong in our fraternities. So. Oh, I didn't know As a matter that. of fact, the Bronx okay. chapter, they call it Los Noobs. Okay. You know, I okay. think it's a play on there's so many Latino members, although they okay. say it's not. Okay. But it, it's, it's nice to, you know, that okay. we diversify at least a little bit. So it's not yeah. basically, it's not, it's not only for, people, for black men. It is more... We have a lot of Latinos. Okay. Uh, not too much of anything else, though. So it's mostly black with a lot of Latinos. Too. It depends on the chapter and the space right, and how the right, brothers feel. Right. You know. Historically, yeah. it was a black fraternity. Because we now, were not allowed in their fraternities. But now it's a right. um, right. fraternity for people of color. Right. right. Okay. That's open to people, for people right. of color. Right, correct. Right. In my chapter, we have um, a brother from uh, South Korea, oh, wow. Jamaica, wow. Um, Greece. Wow. You know, that was wow. our multicultural line. You know, wow. Amazing wow. bros. You know. Well, you know, I love the... the, the the fact that you, you refer to the men as brothers. Oh, they are. So, it, you they know, are. it promotes brotherhood. Right. And it's definitely something that has helped you mm -hmm. in terms of networking, in terms right. of support. Well, for the people that pleasure me, um, I know their family as well as they know me. As a matter of fact, I have a lot of brothers I know better than my actual two blood brothers, and wow. we spend much more time. I love my brother, brother brothers, but one lives in Connecticut, one's all the way in Staten Island. I see them with less frequency than I see about 30 or 40 of my brothers who are regularly at my house. Right. For any excuse to get together, we're going to get together. You know? right. And we look forward to it and we enjoy and it. And actually, you know? my brother is one of your fraternity Absolutely. brothers. Absolutely. I pledge him. That's what, that's how and I he's, you. he's in my house frequently. Right, right. We don't have to give him keys because he has the code. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we don't have to really give him keys. Right. You know, I kidnapped him when I was injured for about a week or so. 
he escaped when I went to the bathroom or something like that, you know. But it was a pleasure having him here, especially since I was going through a traumatic time. And that's the thing about brotherhood. It's like when you need help, you're going to get a lot exactly. of help, you know. It, so exactly. the way we work with each other and treat each other and treat our families, that's paramount. That's what it's about. Exactly. You know? mm. So I'm really glad that we're doing the show on, on fraternities because, you know, we do need to strengthen our communities. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. you know, this is one absolutely. of the ways. Uh, we have so many brothers doing so many incredible things in our communities to build our communities. And Greeks are really strong in the South, mm -hmm. but they're not too bad in the North and the Northeast. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I'm originally from the Bronx. And... Um, when I pledged, there wasn't that many brother, uh, brothers from the Bronx. Right. Now, there's a chapter here. There's one chapter a year a couple times. They're right. doing incredible work. Right. But our five Kappa chapters here are pretty strong. Uh, we pass chapter a year around. You know, okay. The Queens has won it a couple times. New Rochelle is just dominating right now. So uh, we like the competition for us to get better, do right. more community service, reach more people, you know, avail ourselves of the things that we could do to help other people. So it's, it's, it's a good look. It's a good look. You're, you're an incredible mm -hmm. role model, and I mm -hmm. definitely want to see some more of your mm -hmm. art. Oh, thank you. Okay. So can we see the next image? Oh, this was a, another one of those two-for-ones. I literally did the blue one first, dropped it, split it, cracked it. I was like, oh. And it was all these man hours that just went down the pipe. And I had to make it again. I just didn't want to do it in the same colors. I needed something a little bit more adventurous. So I did it the opposite. And then I noticed that the break, um, maybe I can fix it. So I used um, some glue, painted mm -hmm. over the top of it, and the young lady got both of them. Oh, you know? fantastic. I'm trying to remember who I did this for. I'm not sure. This is one of my favorite pieces. Um, this is a chess set. And it's hard because these are all individual pieces of wood. Mm -hmm. I did not make the pieces. Uh, I found the pieces. It was a lot easier. But individual um, lines or groups when they come in have line names. And wow. the name of the seven of us that came in were Crimson Knights. So wow. I found the chess pieces with the Crimson Knight and then I made the board. Wow. The hardest thing about this is that emblem in the center because it's less than an inch. So to make the emblem is something I need with a magnifying glass and it takes a while. I've made a bunch of chess sets, but this is my personal chess set. And this is one of the few things I won't give away. That's a really you know? interesting concept for a chess board because right. usually it's flat. And you have like almost like five or six absolutely layers absolutely in there. So that's that's some. And you, you can actually play chess on it. What did mm -hmm. you What did you use to to I guess gnaw at the wood or to to get the wood out of the, the Well, the that's block? the hard part. I buy a pieces of wood and I just got to make squares of them. Then okay. what I literally got to do is paint the sides of all the squares black and then I alternate between red. So what I do is I lay it down. And I literally, um, a lot of times doing artwork is about how to think about doing it. Right. And I just did from A, B, C, D, E, right. one, two, three. And I literally had to number each piece of wood. So right. as I was painting it, I wouldn't right. lose track of where it went. So right. when I put it together, it was painted. So I had to initial each piece of wood so I knew where to put it back. And then I could start painting it. The middle block was one block just so I can paint it as one. Right. And, you know, but that's probably the most artwork on this particular thing. So if young people want to know why science and math is important, oh, incredible. here's an example incredible. of, incredible. of, of incredible. geometry. Incredible. I tell my students all the time that reading gives you analytical punch. So a lot of problems are just solved just by not doing anything for a second, but just thinking through it. Okay. And a lot of the artwork I do, uh, since I'm not a natural artist, I sit there and think about how to go about it, how to do it. Um, it usually comes to me in the middle of the night, like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I wake up and out of a dead heat, I got an idea, I got to go write it down, or try to write it, memorialize it, and I'll get back to it the next day. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, do we, I think we'll look at one more image and then get the, the last word from, from Dr. Oh. Gerard. Uh, this is for a young lady who's incredible. She does some incredible things in her own org, and she helped an uh, ex-girlfriend of mine get into the organization. So what I wanted to do was reward her. So I made uh, about three or four jackets for these ladies. Um, and this is just the uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha crest on the back of a jean jacket, so with a patch on top. What are some of your projects that you want to work on? Like, I would like to know where are you going with your art? What are your future projects that you have planned? I'm trying to learn how to use negative space and images more, and I'm going to play with that probably in the next day or two. What I'm doing tonight is um, I make calendars from time to time. Mm -hmm. So I have a history calendar, a Kappa calendar. I have one that merges superheroes with police. And every year I do these calendars over. Right, so tonight right. I'm going to actually try to print a bunch of them because somebody asked me some, some and just get them out. And then I'm going to 
update this giant calendar I have of kind of civil rights issues. Uh, it's set on the background of the U.S. Uh, so that's my next project. I did it before, but it's a little dated. It's literally the size of this screen. And I use it when I go into schools to talk to kids about bullying or whatever I'm talking about. And history is one of those things that's getting lost. So I like this particular project because I made a book with everybody mm -hmm. that's on the calendar where we can talk about what's their role, what do they do, what are they famous for? Mm -hmm. Because we're losing uh, some of these icons up. Uh, young people don't know. So that's the next thing I'm doing. Okay. And I'm giving you your brother one because <laughs> he's, he's, he's a history fiend. So Absolutely. I made one for him originally. I'm just updating the images to reflect more of what he wants. Well, you you know, know, so. I'd like to thank you. I'm mm -hmm. very grateful for you for coming on the show. No, I, I'd like to thank you, actually. And, and <laughs> you, you know, know, thank you for giving us a peek into the world of, right. of black fraternities. Um, thank you. Soon becoming, I guess, universal fraternities. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I really appreciate it, and I hope that, you know, maybe next year you could come back and be on the show and we can see mm -hmm. what else you have or, you know, if you've done work with young people, I'd like to see right. their work as well. Okay. But, you mm -hmm. know, thank you. Thank you for having me.